Since I've reincarnated as the villainous father, I'll shower my wife and daughter in love. Chapter 36 The Sword Demon's True Power. The Sword Demon's True Power After Leaving the House. I found myself in the courtyard of the Victor family mansion after taking off my jacket so that I could move more freely. I faced the violent instructor the Victor family had hired. And, watching from the seats, was the Marquis whose brow was matted with nervous sweat, along with his son who had regained consciousness. If you ask me just how I ended up in this sort of predicament. Well, I guess it's because I just couldn't help but meddle. So, after I offered to take over Mask's swordsmanship training, the teacher that Marquis Victor had hired vehemently interjected. Well, I could have silenced him in a moment by letting him know I was a knight, but I wanted to give a man who can hurt a child and laugh about it his own medicine at least once, so I offered him a duel. That teacher immediately accepted my offer, and even when Marquis Victor tried to calm things down he completely ignored him and began to walk towards the courtyard. Well, Marquis Victor might have been saying that for my sake, being from a ministerial family he might not think a nobleman could stand a chance against a trained soldier, but, even if I doubt I can measure up to his true potential, I have faith in this body that Callus had honed over the years. Well, that being said, it has been quite a while since Callus was in a real fight, and I didn't bring the sword I typically practiced with either instead borrowing one that Marquis Victor provided, so I was a little worried. But, well, it should be fine. Um, as I was warming up before the duel, the Marquis son, Mask, suddenly called out to me from close behind. What's wrong? Why are you going so far? Mask spoke to me in a quiet tone of voice so that the Marquis sitting a little while away wouldn't hear him. I, I'm, not really a child of this house. That's why no one really cares about me. But why are you helping me? Well, originally, if I had heard that Mask was adopted before all this happened, I would have been surprised, but I managed to figure it out after seeing the scene from earlier. Let's see, I suppose if you twisted my hand, this is repentance of sorts? Repen, tense. As he looked confused, I tussled my hand through the boy's green hair. Well, it's fair to say that part of the situation you find yourself in is my fault, I guess? So, what I want to say is that I'm trying to take some responsibility for that. The green-haired boy wouldn't understand what I meant, but that's fine. In a way, I guess this is for the sake of my own ego as well. Well, at first I wanted to do this because I couldn't bear to see a young child suffer the same way Laurier had, but when I saw this boy wake up I suddenly realized it myself. Not just that he was only an adopted son to Marquis Victor, but he is, in fact, a boy who would have been taken into my home in the original Otome game. Simply put, I realized that the mask in the game was the adoptive brother of Laurier, the villainous, as well as one of the capture targets himself. Well. It's not as if that was the first thing I was thinking of, but after the incident with the prince I've been trying my best to recall the other capture targets from the game, or something like that. Yeah, well, simply put, it's my responsibility that this child is in this situation because I never sought to adopt him like in the original game, so I feel like I have to take responsibility here. Well, don't worry about it so much, it'll all be fine. As the child looked nervous, I gave him a reassuring smile. Now then, you ready over there, Mr. Duque? After limbering up, the swordsmanship instructor asked me that. Is it because he's so cocksure of himself? He had an awfully lopsided grin on his face, but I nodded curtly and answered him. Ready, but, first of all, if you want to save yourself the trouble of nursing your wounds later, it would be in your best interests to give up early on. Oh. You sure are confident, ain't ya? I tried to give him some honest advice, but the man's cocky smirk seemed to only intensify. Oh, well, I gave him a fair warning, so I guess all that remains is to trust in Callus' body? Now then, the signal to start. Marquis Victor, may I leave it in your hands? Why yes. However, Duke Fall, please don't push yourself too hard. I'm aware. As I turned, I saw that Mask still had a worried look on his face, so I afforded him a quick smile before refocusing my attention on the man in front of me. T then. Begin. 
The battle commenced with Marquis Victor's words. As the instructor walked towards me, slowly raising his blade like he was winding up for a swing. I ignored his attempt at intimidation and plunged straight toward him, knocking away the blade he loosely held out in front of him. Wah! Marquis Victor and the instructor both had a delayed reaction of shock, as the man's sword clattered to the ground a few meters away. The man was agape in confusion as he stared at me, like he didn't know what just happened, but I spoke coldly as I held the tip of my sword at his throat. If you wish to continue, I can let you regather your weapon, but, just so you're aware, if this were a true fight, your head would have already departed your shoulders. TCH. Don't get cocky over some dumb luck. The now defenseless man suddenly came to his senses and cursed me, but I allowed him to back up and collect his blade again. After picking his sword back up, the man didn't make any attempt at hiding his intentions, as he ran straight towards me with a vicious swing that could have cut me in two. Sidestepping, I managed to easily avoid it. Honestly, I'm pretty sure that if I were in my old body, that would have killed me, but... Callus' physical ability was so high that I was able to agilely avoid it without a problem. Shit! Come here, you! The man's skill with a blade didn't seem bad, but, was it just purely an inherent difference in physical talent? There was something about Callus' body that just rendered everything he did completely harmless, even a little pathetic. I avoided his attacks over and over again, sometimes using Callus' speed to disarm him before letting him collect his blade again. Eventually, the man's breathing became hoarse and haggard, but with barely a drop of sweat on my brow I spoke out to him again. Are you ready to give up yet? Fuck. This is bullshit. There's no way in hell I'm losing to some dainty noble. I wasn't really trying to provoke him, but, at any rate, it seems like I stoked his fighting spirit back up. I don't really get anything out of extending this fight anymore, so, should I get serious? After disarming him one more time with ease, this time I thrust my blade forward, stopping its glinting point an inch away from his eyeball. If you don't give up now, are you willing to continue with only one eye? F fuck yo. The man twisted his head away from my blade and tried to strike at me with his fist, but with a flick of the sword, I stopped his strike with its edge. Gua! M my hand. And, as a result, after punching straight into the edge of the blade, the man doubled over in pain, clutching his hand. Since I didn't swing, or perhaps it's because his punch wasn't that hard, he didn't lose a finger, but I could still see the blood flowing down his arm. Well, just that much won't be enough to kill him, but... I'm getting tired of this, so I held my sword high above the man who was doubled over on the ground, and... Well then, so long. Ay ah! Brought my blade down in the dirt right in front of his face. As his life must have flashed before his eyes, the man collapsed into unconsciousness, but I didn't care about that since my eyes were on Marquis Victor, who looked at us in astonishment. Now then, you should have no objections to me teaching your son, correct? It should go without saying that, next to his completely pale-looking adoptive father, that green-haired boy was standing up as he looked my way something sparkling in those eyes of his. Since I've reincarnated as the villainous father, I'll shower my wife and daughter in love chapter 37 a return to the everyday. A return to the everyday. Ha! Huh. Now I've done it. As I sat in the carriage on the way home, I held my head in my hands, thinking about what I had just done. The reason, of course, was the adopted son of Marquis Victor, or rather, the fact that I helped Mask, who in the original Otome game was both my adopted son as well as a capture target for the heroine. Well, no, it's not as if I regret helping him at all. There was no way I could leave a child to suffer through the same sort of thing that Laurier had, and it was obvious that Mask was being treated poorly, so that's not an issue, but... Why does it feel like I'm getting involved with all the capture targets myself? As a result of our duel, the mercenary instructor was fired. It was agreed I would take over, but, after I calmed down, I couldn't help but wonder if I was an idiot for getting involved in something that could one day hurt Laurier. Why did this happen? The only reason I went to that house was to crush some pesky bugs that were trying to attach themselves to my Laurier. 
And even though it's just once a week, my workload is going to increase again. What's more, even though I'm already so busy, for some reason I've taken even more work upon myself. But, well, I remembered the look Mask gave me as I was leaving. That boy's eyes were shining with something I can only call respect. Well, if I can shape his character properly through training, I can make sure that he won't be a threat to Laurier in the future as well. All right, let's go ahead with that. Father, as I returned to the mansion, it was Laurier who first rushed at me as I stepped in the door. As Laurier pulled at the fabric of my pants, innocently but adamantly insisting I hug her, I swept her into my arms, my serious thoughts from before being washed away by the enormous effort I was exerting to keep a straight face. I'm home, Laurier. Welcome back, father, smiling at me like an angel. Yep, Laurier is just absurdly cute. Well, of course I kept that to myself, as I restrained myself and asked Laurier a question with a gentle smile on my face instead. Your timing was very good, perhaps you were waiting for me? Yes, I wanted to meet father, was I bad? Oof, I almost staggered at that heavy blow I couldn't avoid. Even though I had just survived a duel without a single scratch, just a few words from my daughter was enough to completely catch me off guard. Honestly, Laurier and Sasha may really be the death of me. Well, putting Laurier aside, if Sasha wasn't pregnant, she had the ability to make me lose my reason and turn me into a wolf. If we're not careful, our family might grow quite large. Now then, I need to talk to Sasha about a few things that happened today, but, what will you do, Laurier? I want to go together with father. I see. Then, are you fine if I carry you upstairs like this, then? Yep. A full-bloomed smile spread across her face. Ah. Just seeing that face wiped away all my worries. As I carried that adorable girl in my arms, I went up the steps to my beloved wife's room, where she was still recovering. After all, my wife and daughter really are like an oasis in the desert. Since I've reincarnated as the villainous father, I'll shower my wife and daughter in love Chapter 38 Small Battle. Ah, you're back. As soon as I arrived in front of Sasha's room while holding Laurier, it was mother who spoke. She had just came out of the room. Callus, mother, is Sasha awake? Callus, mother. Oh, good morning dear. Laurier who is in my arms greets mother as she smiles. While she is doing so, mother gave a smile to a lovely sight of her grandchild. Callus mother. Sasha is awake. She has been waiting for your return, so hurry. I will. Having said that, I tried to enter the room while still holding Laurier, but not before I noticed that mother had put out a hand and I turned my head. What's with that hand? Unfortunately, there are no souvenirs. Well, I didn't expect such a thing. I want you to lend me my cute grandchild. I see. She was referring to Laurier. Mother seems to really like Laurier. But I was protesting a little because I want to resist her cause I do not want to easily pass a lovely girl such as her. I would like to spend time with my daughter to heal my fatigue today. Do it later. I want to have tea with Laurier now. Sparks are about to fly. With my daughter, or her grandchild. Hanging in the balance, a terrible storm is brewing between mother and son. Although, contrary to the tense atmosphere in the room, Laurier spoke up somewhat timidly. Father, do you not get along with grandmother? I'm still going to see Laurier after this. I don't know what to do, but I can't wait to see what I can do with the situation. It was a joke to Laurier, but as I thought this one, contentious development should not have been shown and so I decided to raise the white flag myself. Laurier, I'm sorry, but will you wait for me while you have tea with grandmother? I'll join you later, was that all right? When I sent an eye contact to my mother, my mother nods and stretches her hands out and reaches out to Laurier. Come on Laurier, let's wait together. Okay. Laurier took her hands from mine and reached out to my mother's. But it seemed like for a moment she was down so I patted her head and gave her a smile. It's okay, a smile from an angel. I can feel so much when I see Laurier with a smile on her face as if she were an angel, I think that I am tired after all. 
I leave Laurier to my mother and then I enter my beautiful and adorable Sasha's room. Contentious. The cause of argument. Since I've reincarnated as the villainous father, I'll shower my wife and daughter in love chapter 39 report and healed. Report and healed, welcome home, my lord. I left Laurier to my mother and entered Sasha's room. As I entered the room my wife greeted me with a warm, loving smile. Yup, this is what I wanted to see the smile of my wife. The expression of my kind wife envelops me as I approach Sasha in a gentle manner. I'm home. Sasha, how are you feeling? I'm feeling fine. Okay, that's good to hear. That's good however I'll observe Sasha for a bit since my beloved daughter can always put up with mother. Observing a pregnant wife is more important than most things. Sasha blushes in embarrassment as I gaze at her. Oh, um, my lord. When you stare so much, that is. TLN. When reading my lord make sure to pronounce it as, me lord. Ha, huh? ah, I'm sorry. It's just I can't resist adoring the face of my beautiful wife. Is it cute? Sasha smiles in embarrassment. Oh. My. God. It's too cute. My wife's face when she is embarrassed is like an arrow that went through my heart. It feels like my heart is purified every time she does it. Yosh. I realized once again that this is what I will protect. Sasha becomes flustered at the moment, but suddenly I realized something. Um, my lord did something happen? Huh? What is it? Oh. Um, pardon if I misunderstood. But somehow my lord's expression seems a bit more tired than usual. I was a little surprised by the words that Sasha said. Although I usually have Callus's expression, but I do agree how tired I am. You can see that? Yeah. Um, could it be you're doing something unreasonable for my or Laurier's sake again? Working too hard? For your sakes? I'm totally not. Not even a little. I swear. TLN. The kanji had multiple different meaning it was taking me a bit to figure out if someone could help me it would be nice. Since she figured out that I was tired, I decided to tell her what happened throughout my day. Well, of course I didn't tell her about the capture target nor that Otom game related stuff. Then, as I finished the story, Sasha grabbed my hand and said gently. My lord. I love my husband who works hard for me and Laurier. However, don't overdo it. If my lord is gone I can't imagine how I. I. Sasha showed a sad expression before she could finish the sentence. I cursed my foolishness seeing this. I chose to act because I didn't want to see Sasha and Laurier look like this. And yet, it's still not acceptable to have Sasha with this expression. That gives the raising phrase with the thought of cutting herself out of the relationship in an Otome game. TLN. It said maiden game but Otome game sounds better. I couldn't stand this any longer. So I hugged Sasha slowly with all my warmth behind it and said. It's alright. I'll be by Sasha's side forever. R. Really? Yes. It's true I promise. W. Will you stay my husband until death? Rather, I'm not going to let Sasha go, so be prepared. My lord. Sasha hugs me tightly, as shivers slightly. As I hugged her gently I swore that I'll protect the two of them no matter what happens. Since I've reincarnated as the villainous father, I'll shower my wife and daughter in love chapter 40 reflection. After a while, Sasha was tired and fell asleep, so I gently put Sasha back in her bed and left her room quietly. Still, it's really stupid of me to make Sasha have a worried and sad expression. I want Sasha and Laurier to smile and I don't want them to worry about me even when I have difficulties in my heart. Speaking with the spirit of self-sacrifice may be good, but it is worse than anything to worry someone important to you. Yeah, I'm repenting now. When I was deep in thought, I arrived at the room where Mother and Laurier were having tea, so I shook off my latent thoughts and entered the room. Oh, it took longer than expected. The figure of Mother elegantly drinking tea as I entered the room was impressive. But as my Sasha is usually even more awe-inspiring than this, I was able to respond to my mother with indifferent eyes I was not particularly anxious about my response because of this, because I am accustomed to Sasha tasting tea like a goddess. Mother, what is that envious sight? Whatever do you mean by an envious sight? 
As clarification, it's concerning my dear daughter peacefully lying down on your lap. That's right, I noticed it immediately after I had entered the room. Mother held Laurier in her lap. As I stared and once again said, what an enviable sight, my mother giggled. Oh my, I wonder if Callus also want a lap pillow? I wonder if Sasha is unsatisfied as the spoiled mother. I'd like to rebuke further, but at least know Sasha is the only one who will be spoiled, so it's different. You know that, don't you? Well, I'd like Sasha to be a little more conservative, if I were you. Well, well, because I'm sweetened with Sasha, let's try it this time. Well, I want Sasha to be a little spoiled as well, but I should probably act more conservative. When I decided on that kind of thing secretly, I turned back to mother talking with a serious expression. Well, this isn't completely your fault. Is it? Laurier has been worried because you've been acting strange since this morning. I was relieved that you had arrived home safely and went to be with her. That's my responsibility. I've been so worried about Laurier. I really don't think I'm going to do it. To not make them worry and make them have such an expression. This isn't much different from the previous callous. I should be more careful not to make them worry about me anymore. Definitely. Mother, will you punish me later? If you like pain, have Sasha do it. I don't want Sasha's hands to get hurt. Besides, Sasha is too kind. She wouldn't be able to punish me. That's why, in order to put that feeling to rest, I want mother to punish me. While Sasha and Laurier are so kind that they won't be able to properly punish me, more than anything, this is my selfish way of doing things. Because of this, my mother is the only one I can rely on. At last, mother sighed at my words and responded, understood. I will scold you in secret from Laurier and Sasha, thank you. Also, will you change the lap pillow for Laurier in a little bit? No, with that, mother and I fought quietly over Laurier's lap pillow until she woke up.